And now I'd like to invite the panelists of the other block, uh, Circular Economy. Petr Kalas will be the moderator. He's the president of the Czech Business Council for Business Development. And the panelists are uh, Maria Logrova, PR manager Malfini, uh, then uh, Pavel Zedniček, uh, financial director INCIEN, uh, then uh, Pavel Snop, uh, Chess Energy Products, uh, Barbara Kotoun, sustainability manager IKEA, and uh, Jan Gemrich, uh, Union of uh, Cement Manufacturers, Czech Republic. Good afternoon. Welcome to another panel dedicated to circular economy. By way of introduction, I'd like to welcome all panelists once more time. And let me open the discussion with a few remarks. The relationship of the circular economy and climate change is given by the fact that the proportion of uh, mining and processing of mined materials causes 60% of CO2 emissions and the consumption material pays, according to the research from 2019, is three times higher than the raw materials capa capacity of our planet until 2050. So the consumption of materials is not sustainable. The European Union, within the Green Deal strategy, uh, has got 19 other uh, policies next to the uh, uh, sustainability, so circular uh, economy is one of them. The action plan of the EU on the circular economy economy from spring 2022 is a European agenda that focuses on European competitiveness and reduction of import dependency and focus on uh, safe products available uh, or uh, that can be repaired. So this is a new development. We are hearing about it from the the media, and this is what the future brings us. This action plan specifies a deviation from uh, the traditional linear process, take, make, use, and dispose. That is that uh, I take a material and dispose it at the end. So we prefer uh, the reduce, reduce, repair, and recycle uh, process. Says. So our today's topic is how do the companies uh, reflect on this new approach in their corporate strategies. Uh, the focus of the action plan covers a broad area. Uh, scope is very broad. Uh, it's, it includes construction materials, furniture, textiles, batteries, electronics. We are hearing of cement about that from the media. It includes steel, cement, packaging material. And today, uh, representatives of the industry will uh, tell us what measures they take. So let me mention that some of them uh, do contribute to the effort of the Czech Business Council for Sustainable Development of the relevant panel of our council. So can you please introduce uh, your companies first? And let me give the floor to Maria Lodrova, uh, representing Malfini. Good afternoon. I have two slides for you. The first will be just uh, as an introduction to show you the 
label of our company. You may know us. Malfini is the leader at the Czech and also Central European market. We supply uh, ad textile and we also supply working garments. And here you see the label, the eagle. And Malfini means uh, uh, eagle in Creole, Creole language. You may think, well, textile, fast-moving goods, and you will be right. Of course, this is what we understood, and we are well aware of the fact that textile production is one of the most um, one of the activities that impacts negatively the environment. That is why we started with some first steps, but we believe that even the first steps we took are big steps. We started with packaging. We have a project, we call it Unified Box, because uh, packaging is important not only for the transportation of goods to the Czech Republic, but also it is important for the transportation of our goods to the client. So the project Unified Box is very simple. We managed to negotiate with all our suppliers that they will supply goods in boxes of one size that fits into containers. That means we do not transport filling material, we do not transport empty air. And the boxes that you can see here in the warehouse are rather durable because these boxes have to uh, survive the transport from overseas by boats. And uh, a part of it is used for the distribution when we distribute to our clients. So this is our circularity project. Uh, we also reduce the packaging material that we use. We used to have 10 different types of uh, packaging materials. Now we have uh, boxes that allow us not to use any filling material. We reduce the, reduce the number of times that we use. And uh, now instead of using the three smallest ones, we use plastic bags. If you hear it, you may think, well, plastic is not sustainable, is it? Well, the contrary is true. We have calculations that show that the carbon footprint of the plastic bags is much lower than the carbon footprint of the paper boxes. And we also agreed with our transporters. You see the big uh, transportation box there. So we uh, transport in these boxes that are recyclable and reusable. Again, another small step that we took. And obviously, we produce textile, as I have said already. And now I have to mention something we are very proud of. This is something new. This year, we have T-shirts and uh, sweet shirts made of recycled plastic. This is one example. This is made from 15 half liter uh, plastic bottles. If you want to have a closer look at it, you can uh, come and I'll show it to you. We also use organic cotton, merino. Here we're not talking about circular economy, but sustainability is very high here. So that's our circularity project. You deserve a round of applause. This is a transfer to new methodology within circularity. And let me now welcome Pavel uh, Zedniček. Uh, INSEAN is a partner of our council, so can you introduce your organization? Thank you very much, Petr. Thank you for the invitation. 
I do represent the Institute of Circular Economy organization that fosters circular economy from 2014 uh, for quite some time. And I want to point out about two key activities that should be mentioned today. One of them being that circular economy has been perceived as something that is a nice part of sustainability. And the discussion always ended up with uh, uh, decarbonization of the energy mix, which is critical. We had a panel on energy uh, today, but what is important in our opinion and what we miss in the Czech debate is how we work with materials. Often we talk about energy efficiency and then we hear about circular economy and question always comes, what is it? And if we replace it with one word or it's material efficiency, so then we comprehend better. If we have a look at the Czech industry, which is a highly uh, material intensive, uh, then the potential for circular economy is high. We've published a study that is available via the QR code. It's in English. And there we want to calculate the potential. It's not our difficult analysis. We are based on foreign sources where they uh, emphasize the topic uh, much more. Uh, so today, the energy mix is intensive and it's rather dirty. We talk about the energy industry, but future development will decarbonize the energy mix and we will focus on the emissions in the materials that is the built in emissions in buildings. It is uh, 80 percent uh, energy, 20 percent materials, but in 10 years' time, it will become 50-50. So in the way we decarbonize uh, production of cement or steel, uh, that, that is critical, but change will have to come not only in uh, the production, but in consumption. Growth in material consumption is huge. It's unbelievable. And we have to ask, how can we create added value with economy, with uh, the uh, few materials that are so intense? Uh, so we will not we will publish the study, there will be an event, and it is a topic that should be debated more. Uh, and before I finish, I have to mention one interesting thing. In uh, April, we have started a Czech circular hotspot. This is a parallel of the reefing uh, project. Uh, and the topic of circular economy wants to be developed in this community. I mean, because we want to inform each other uh, and carry through and support the change. Uh, we also publish uh, legislative barriers uh, that prevent further development of circular economy. Thank you. And now over to Mr. Slop. Mr. Snop is the head of the research and development department of the chess company, and he specializes in energy products. I'm very much interested in this initiative of chess, so the floor is yours and please explain. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to introduce very quickly how in chess and not only in the chess group, because I speak on behalf of our member organizations because we associate producers of energy projects. It is a national association. And uh, now we change our name. Now we are uh, called the Association of Alternative Building Material Producers because we want to show what different types of uh, alternative materials exist for the building industry, but also for other industries. 
and uh, we cooperate with the association at the European level, ECOBA, which doesn't sound very nice. It is the European Combustion Product Association, where we uh, cooperate on guidelines and we <clears throat> cooperate in order to be able to develop uh, new types of materials for the building industry. Here I have a very important question. And this is a question that has been uh, discussed during the whole day. In other words, the society is asking for sustainability. Sustainability is considered to be a key indicator that we take into account whenever we determine uh, the success or failure of our project. So I have been attending many events, and uh, at these events, we discuss all the options and possibilities. So my question is, what is sustainability? And uh, my question for you is, what do you want and why you want it? I think that only if we answer these questions, th then we will be able to create multidisciplinarity, because it is a must today. It is important to interconnect different segments, and this is the way that moves us forward. So this is the challenge for the humanity. I think that we cannot move away from this trend forward. So for me, the answer to our challenges is the multidisciplinary approach because we have many tools available, but the multidisciplinary approach helps us to view it from the right point of view. We have uh, the challenges in the energy sector. For instance, we burn coal, the byproduct would be ashes and other materials, and these materials then can be used elsewhere, and these materials already comply with uh, many requirements that we have. Mr. Emnick represents the cement industry, and we have a beautiful example of how it can work, but it's not discussed um, publicly, therefore it's possible. it is necessary to uh, improve our PR. And here you see an example of uh, the usage of alternative materials that are almost uh, emission free. So you can produce high quality products that the humanity needs and uh, it gives you time. It buys you time because the material as we use them today will stop being available one day and we will have to come up with new solutions. May It may sound like science fiction today, but today it is the time. We, as the Czech Republic and also Poland maybe, we have an enormous quantity, billions of tons of materials that we can process, the materials already exist here, regardless of the operations of coal-fired um, power stations. And by using these material, we will increase the sustainability <coughs> because these materials have almost zero carbon footprint. But we need to adopt the multidisciplinary approach to achieve that and understand that the materials have been here. We simply have to use them properly. Thank you. Thank you, and let me invite the representative of the European region, Sweden, where the sustainability is a part of the constitution and part of strategy of the companies, Barbara Cotone. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good afternoon. I've been thinking that, you know, IKEA, I will not introduce our business, but I will introduce a circular uh, product, second life of furniture. I love figures. So let me introduce you uh, to the product in figures, 1.6, first figure. As Mr.
the Kalash set, the system in which we work. We produce products, use them, and dispose them. It's not sustainable. It means that we consume up to date 1.6 times of the sources of our planet. For IKEA, this is not sustainable in the long term. If we want to grow, we have to understand that we have to seek new ways how to grow without abusing the natural natural resources. We've got a target for the year 2030. Uh, we want to achieve circularity and climate positivity uh, that year. Uh, these topics are interconnected. The climate positivity means that we want to reduce more emissions of greenhouse gases than we produce, and circularity is one of the tools that will help us to achieve this target. Why? The 20, that's the third figure. According to the uh, study of a foundation that uh, deals with circular economy, we know that if we transfer into a circular economy, we will be able to save up to 20% of the greenhouse gases emissions that will be emitted to the air until 2050. So circular is economy is one of the solutions. In 2017, we were one of the first regions, even before Sweden, uh, we've launched the service Second Life of Furniture, used by thousands of people. 370, 52 customers used the service in 2021. We have repurchased 7,000 products for them. How does it work? If you have a product, you don't don't like, you don't need at home, you simply want to get rid of it, you don't have to dispose it, put it next to uh, some garbage, you can sell it back to uh, IKEA. You take a photograph, you download it to our web page, you receive a price offer, and if you accept it, you will transport it to pick up point of IKEA, or we can transport it there and we've got a department uh, where we sell second-hand products. 1.5 uh, is the uh, turnover of products in our circular hub of IKEA. This is a result that shows how high is the potential of second-hand uh, sale growth. Uh, we only keep the products for a day and a half, then we resell them. So this is the second line life of furniture project and let us hope that uh, we will be able to remove the brackets and uh, create circularity. Thank you very much for this very original presentation of your strategy. The next guest is Mr. Gemrich. I wonder whether you want to say a couple of introductory remarks before we start with the next part, which are the questions. Well, good afternoon. I'll try to answer the questions in one block. It will be more useful. Each of you uh, imagines uh, the cement works and production of cement as something very dirty, where you have uh, many residues that are simply dumped at a landfill. But this is not true anymore. When we mine the raw material in a quarry, we add 5 to 7% of recycled material to it, usually recycled concrete. Then the material goes to the, uh, to the uh, furnace. Uh, we do not use coal anymore. We usually use recycled alternative fuels for our furnaces. And in the end, we have different types of cement of different different sizes. There is approximately 36 different types of cement available. And we say to designers and architects uh, and so on that uh, 
Some types of cement that are not environmental friendly will not be available anymore. Portland cement, for instance, will not be available anymore because it is a very environmental unfriendly product. So we say to our clients who use our products that they have to learn how to use other more environmental friendly types of cement. Last year, we taught this to the big five in the Czech Republic, that is Metrostav, Stabak, Stab, uh, Skanska, and other companies. They know it already. Next year, we will teach this to designers because we have to use European norms and Czech norms, and we have to uh, start changing these things, these approaches. So in the end, we transform cement into concrete, and uh, the concrete can last for 50 to 100 years, and it's not dumped at a landfill anymore. It is crushed. We take the steel structure that is in it, and we reuse it. And the old concrete, the mass, is uh, crushed and uh, ground a part is used for the production of cement and part is used for recycled aggregates uh, because, as you probably know, in the Czech Republic, we had not opened a new quarry for aggregates for 20 years in the Czech Republic, uh, which is good, but we need materials to be able to build, build new buildings. So the recycled aggregates have completely different properties compared to natural sources. So again, we have to uh, change our approach, change the recipes. So this was the description of the closed cycle between the raw materials, cement, and concrete using alternative fuels. And in between somewhere, there is the Green Deal. So we are getting ready together with the energy industry, the steel, industry, because for us, the EU test will stop uh, in a couple of years, and we will have to adopt new mechanisms. And we really do not understand what it means for us, but we have to be ready. And uh, we have to be also one of the driving forces <coughs> Uh, that will help Europe to achieve the carbon neutral future. And now a similar process as in the previous panels. Can you please uh, answer the introductory question? What adjustments have you done, planned to do in your company in response to the current energy challenges and disruptions, and how do they fit into your decarbonization strategy and plans? Can you be brief, please? Let us start with uh, Mrs. Logrova. Uh, can you show the first slide of mine? Uh, we have an advantage. Uh, we are not energy uh, We manufacture abroad. Uh, second, our shareholders are visionaries, uh, <coughs> mainly one of them. If you remember the first slide I showed you, it showed our logistics center in Ostrava uh, that we use to distribute goods not only to 35 countries of Europe. This center is not only is very up to date. It's not only photovoltaics, it's also recharging of uh, lifts or e-cars in Ostrava and Ustí nad Labem. All of these aspects enable us to achieve energies, electric energy savings. And uh, in uh, 21 and in 2020, 
we was independent uh, from 82 percent. Our head office in Usti nad Labem was constructed with solar panels. Uh, and as I said, uh, we used two e-cars and we changed our car park to CNG. Uh, and we really follow the decarbonization targets. We've got a strategy until 2030. We want to become neutral in scope one, two. We are going to extend our photovoltaics in both Ostrava and Usti nad Labem. I only want to add that I visited your warehouse in Ostrava. I can recommend a visit to all of you. It's wonderful. Uh, it's energy and warehousing profiles. Pavel, thank you. It's difficult or maybe simple to answer this uh, question because we have two offices in Prague. But just a couple of words to explain why I believe that circular economy is so important. I'll go back to the discussion on energy efficiency that is the focus of our discussion. If we take the materials, we have to see them as a bank of uh, stored energy, and we waste it. Let's take municipal waste. We still have half of, munis of municipal waste that is landfilled in the Czech Republic. And uh, we think about how to uh, automatize our production processes. We talk about the EAI, but we still uh, landfill our waste, which is uh, paradoxical. So if we take any product, even this building is a sort of material where we have energy built in, and the more efficient we work with such material, the closer we will get to energy self-autonomy. So this is what I wanted to highlight, because uh, now we talk about the energy sector. It is our priority today, but it's not energy and materials. It's not energy or materials. It is energy and materials. So we have to take it as a connecting vessel. Yes, Mr. Snop, please. Thank you. As I have mentioned already, we are a subsidiary, 100% owned uh, by Chez, and our company was set up for this reason. So we've been in existence for 14 years, and we have been preparing for the situation that we have today, because in the course of the last 14 years, we introduced many new products to the market. We wanted to prepare for these times when it will be really important to have these products because it will help us to achieve carbon neutrality. We are not uh, interested in energy production as our parent company. We are interested in energy products, which shows that our group understood many years ago that it is important to be active and proactive in uh, these areas. In the past, we transformed and processed uh, waste. We used the complicated technology to transform waste into uh, good products for the building industry, and we have to continue to do so. It's also uh, an issue for the heating plant sector, and we've got a representative on our specialized panel uh, who takes similar steps. Uh, well, as for IKEA and our decarbonization strategy, I've already introduced it. There is no change. We <coughs> invest into solar panels, heat pumps, and uh, independence uh, of our uh, department stores. So we've got a deadline, 2030, and our priority is to work individually with the technical aspects of each department store. There are, uh, well, different 
and uh, let's say holes in the roof and investments into the systems of smart buildings management is important. We want to be uh, energy efficient. The crisis is an opportunity for us and uh, it's good for us that because the dramatic uh, increase of energy prices, the business cases for the energy sufficiency and energy independence do come out much better. So uh, crisis as an opportunity, right? It's not a cliche. It is a practical example. And now we are approaching the last round of uh, questions and answers. Uh, Mrs. Logrova, what importance do you assign to circular economy in your business strategy and development? Uh, how do you pursue this strategy? You've already responded, so can you add uh, any further information to it? As you said, Petra, uh, fast turning goods. We know what it means for us and uh, risk or opportunity. It is a challenge. It is a big challenge indeed. And uh, it's both risk and opportunity. Uh, risk lies in the fact that the Czech society is still not exactly ready for, for it. We can do plastic, we, we are able to recycle and uh, sort uh, paper and plastic, but not textile. So this is a risk we are scared of. And it's an opportunity at the same time. We closely follow the EU legislation. We are ready for the change. And now I can't be precise. I can't give you any details, but I believe that we will be ready. Uh, yes, the EU taxonomy will give you an opportunity to apply and implement the textile part of your business, uh, Pavel. Yes. Uh, the key precondition in using recycled materials is commitment of the clients in procurement. What would you suggest to change in the existing Czech practice to incentivize them? Well, today there we have a law, public uh, procurement act, which uh, obliges uh, us to include the environment criteria into the procurement. So uh, the done, done has enabled it, enabled it. Uh, but the uh, public uh, institutions are hesitant in applying the criteria. They usually circumvene it. They meet the obligation, but they don't meet the purpose. So. Here it depends on education. We have to educate the public uh, administration. We have to explain to them what it means and what chances it gives them. Because the government, the state who uh, procures the key infrastructures, buildings and products is a big client and they've got this great uh, tool in their hand that can trigger circular economy. However, uh, they stumble because uh, they are under pressure. It's a huge responsibility and we have a study on uh, procurement, public procurement in the Czech Republic compared to the Netherlands. In the Netherlands it is uh, quality and price 50 to 50, including other criteria and in the Czech Republic price is the key indicator or key value in the public procurement and now amidst the uh, energy crisis as Bara says, it will make sense now, but it's not the way we should follow. Here, we try to cooperate with the public administration and organize workshops and education for them. Thank you. Mr. Snop, what are the major areas of applied circular economy in your company, and how do they contribute environmentally and economically to uh, the supply chain and profile? And how does your company 
stand in this respect compared to other energy uh, companies, energy producing companies? You've already g gave us some ans given us some answers, so could you elaborate on that? Yes, we are the leaders in this era because of our size too. So we had, had the honor to uh, launch a methodology indicating how to work with these materials, how to assess them, and how to set the conditions for their use. So here we also work as the educators. We uh, work uh, not only within our associations, but also elsewhere. And let me also say that thanks to the fact that we were involved in applied research and development. We were able to develop in our company our own green binding material with almost zero carbon footprint that is already available on the market and is already used. And um, we're just waiting for an approval of an investment into uh, large scale industrial production. But this is a beautiful example of uh, the fact that if there is a will, there is a way. And now a question for Barbara Cotton. How has the concept of circular economy changed your business? And what are your key plans for the future? You've already mentioned it. Is there anything else you would like to add? Well, I would like to mention I'm speaking on behalf of a retailer and a brand that manufactures products. And if you want to work properly with a circular economy, you have to take responsibility for the whole with the uh, raw materials, but it doesn't end with your products being on a shelf. We need uh, well-educated uh, clients, and we also have to give the customers the means to recycle. So in other words, we have to give the clients the opportunity to prolong the life of the product or to repair the product if need be. And concerning our future plans, we focus on one topic now, which is our priority. Waste, working with waste, how to use uh, waste in our production and ideally have a product that is produced solely from our own waste. Thank you. So that's the end of this part. We have used our time slot. And now, <coughs> Mr. Gemrich had to leave, unfortunately, but now. We will turn to you because we have the Mentimeter, uh, Mentimeter question. You can again register for the application. And the question is here for you. So this is the login data. And uh, the question for you is the Czech public sector should gradually require minimum shares of recycled material to be used in technical specifications uh, for works in public tenders? And the answer is, uh, I definitely agree. I agree. I do not have an opinion. I do not agree. I do not disagree. I disagree and I strongly disagree. So please give us your answers. Well, despite the minimum number of participants, we see that there is a support, strong support or clear support. So that's the end of this panel. Thank you very much, Ms. Maria Logrova, Malfini, Pavel Zedniček, Director ECN, Mr. Snop Ches, and uh, Mrs. Barbara Coton Ikea. And I also thank Mr. Gemrich. Thank you very much, and I wish you every success in your business and every success with your 
uh, circular economy plans. Thank you.